In this video, we're going to be going over loadouts, weapons, builds, perks, and equipment to help boost your Warzone gameplay. If you're looking for specific tips, timestamps will be linked in the description below. When building your loadout, you first have to pick your primary weapon. What weapon class you use comes down to preference, so I'm going to be going over what I believe to be the best guns from the main weapon classes. Let's start with the ARs. The Grau, even though it was recently nerfed, is still a good gun. There was a slight damage range decrease as well as a slight recoil increase. This is still manageable, just might take an extra shot or two to get a kill with it. The attachments on the Grau that I recommend are the Monolithic Suppressor, the Tempest 26.4 inch Archangel Barrel, Tac Laser, Commando Foregrip, and the 60 round mags. The mags can be switched out for the 50 round mags for more mobility, but I prefer the 60 to make sure I don't run out of ammo when fighting multiple people. The gun I've used since the start of this season is the Ram 7. It has a nice fire rate and a nice size mag to get shit done. The attachments that I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, the FSS Ranger Barrel, Tac Laser, Commando Foregrip, and the 50 round mags. These attachments help increase the accuracy and range of the weapon, making it more viable. The FAL has become one of the most dominant guns in Warzone to date with its incredible killing power and a fire rate that goes as fast as you can pull the trigger. This is not a gun to sleep on. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, the XRX Marksman Barrel, the 5 milliwatt Laser, 30 round mags, and the rubberized grip tape. These attachments help reduce the recoil on the gun while bolstering the damage range and ADS speed. The M4 is also a very good weapon for Warzone and has a very fast fire rate and high damage output. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, the stock M16 Grenadier, Commando Foregrip, 60 round mags, and a stipled grip tape. This gun is very good for outspeeding other popular rifles. Its quick sprint to fire speed makes it a good switch up if you're not finding success with the other rifles. Now let's take a look at the snipers. The AX50 is my personal favorite sniper in Warzone with its speed and damage output, it's pretty hard to beat. Chest shots and headshots are almost required to make it viable, but if you're comfortable enough to hit consistent headshots, this is the gun for you. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, Tac Laser, Singard Arms Assassin Stock, 7 Round Mags, and the Focus Perk. The Focus Perk may be questionable to some of you, but I like to use it to lessen the scope bobble so I can hit shots more consistently. And its quickness helps with the follow up shots in case of a miss. The HDR is very consistent in its damage output. It can bust shields if not kill most opponents in one shot, and it has a very large range. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, the 26.9 inch HDR Pro Barrel, Variable Zoom Scope, FTAC Champion Stock, and the focus perk. This is a very lethal sniper, but its mobility and ADS speed can cost you some fights, so make sure you have the shot before taking it. Now let's look into the SMGs. The PB Bison is my sleeper for this category. It has a very large mag capacity and a fast fire rate that can save your ass in close quarter situations. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, 5 milliwatt Laser, Corvus Skeleton Stock, 84 round mags, and the rubberized grip tape. This is good for follow-ups after a shot or to quickly take out multiple enemies without having to worry about reloading. The MP7 is a fast-firing weapon of mass destruction that can quickly wipe out opponents. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, FSS Recon Barrel, 5 milliwatt Laser, Ranger Foregrip, and the 60 round Max. The MP5 is one of the more popular SMGs in Warzone, even with its nerfs in the last patch, it's still a viable weapon. The attachments I use for it are the Monolithic Suppressor, Merc Foregrip, 45 round Mags, 5 milliwatt laser, and the FTAC collapsible stock. I don't have much experience with weapons outside of the ones I've listed. I tend to stick to guns I like and I know that work well. So I don't want to BS any classes I haven't tried myself, but if you have any weapons you think I'm missing out on, leave your builds in the comments below. Now that we've gone over guns and their builds, let's look into how you should put together your loadout. For me, I try to cover all my bases in terms of range when I'm making my Warzone classes. I usually aim for a gun that can handle medium range for my primary, which is usually an AR but I keep the iron sights on it most of the time to maximize attachment potential. It helps me to not get caught with my dick out if I'm in a close quarter situation. My secondaries are mainly snipers to get those quick picks making it easier to push a team when they're scrambling to get their teammate back up. And I just find sniping fun. But occasionally if I want to play more aggressive I'll switch out the sniper for an SMG and mow down teams up close and personal like. But since we covered how I use two primary weapons, let's get into the perks that you should build your class around. For the first perk slot, let's start with Double Time. Double Time will give you double the duration for your sprint plus an increase to your crouch movement speed by 30%. This is best used for more aggressive loadouts or if you find yourself not being able to get to safety quick enough. EOD will reduce the damage you take from explosives like grenades and launchers. This can save your ass from people trying to nade you out of a corner or give you an extra second of life when dealing with opponents that use a lot of explosives. Scavenger will drop more ammo when resupplying from dead players, but in my opinion this is a useless perk in Warzone. If you're already doing well in a game of Warzone, your ammo will fill up quick, so I recommend only using this if you're running low on ammo a lot. 
Cold-blooded makes you less visible to enemies that are using thermal sights, but chances are if you're not hiding in foliage, you probably won't notice much of a difference in how much longer you survive. It's very situational and you'll probably be seen regardless. Kill chain increases your chances of finding kill streaks in supply boxes. From my experience, I haven't noticed a change in how often I get kill streaks from boxes, but if you did, you'd probably just end up with a dog shit shield turd anyway, so this perk is useless. Especially late game when you won't be looting much. Quick fix will immediately start your health regeneration upon killing an enemy. This can be clutch in close situations and can help you survive longer while playing aggressively. Here's my ranking for the first perk slot in order of how useful they are. For the second perk slot, we'll start with restock. Restock will recharge your equipment every 50 seconds. This can be useful if you use your lethals a lot, but it wouldn't be my choice for this perk slot. Hardline gives you 25% off at the shop for kill streaks. This is not that useful unless you're constantly going for UAVs. Overkill lets you select two primary weapons in your class. This is my most used perk and my recommendation for this perk slot, because it allows you to use two guns you're used to, giving you more of an advantage. High alert gives you a slight vision pulse when an enemy can see you, but this perk is pretty ass, and most of the time if someone sees you, they'll probably just shoot at you right away. So this perk is super situational and basically useless, so don't equip this perk. Ghost makes you undetectable by UAVs, radar drones, and heartbeat sensors. This perk is the most clutch shit. I swear everyone in Warzone uses heartbeat sensors and scrambles to get UAVs, so this will help you stay safe from the sweaty kids trying to hunt you down. Point Man makes it so you and your team earn more money from completing contracts. This is also pretty useless, but at least you get some money for it if you're in a pinch. Here's my ranking for the second perk slot in order of how useful they are. For the third perk slot, let's start with Tuna. Tune up increases revival time by 25%. This can help if you need to quickly get your teammates up and mess up your opponent's timing if they push you after downing one of your teammates. Amps gives you faster weapon swap speed and launcher reload speed. This is best used for quickly switching to a sniper for a quick pick or to switch to another weapon in close situations. Shrapnel gives you an extra lethal and delays health regeneration of enemies when hit by explosive damage. Use this if you're finding yourself using a lot of lethals or just want to have more on you. Battle Harden reduces the strength of enemy flashes, stuns, EMP, and gas grenades. It also makes you immune to snapshot grenades. I don't think this is a very useful perk, but it can help you out if some chode is tossing tacticals at you. Spotter allows you to see enemy equipment and kill streaks while giving you the ability to hack certain types of equipment. This is helpful for pushing buildings and helping you push more effectively on those downtown roof campers. Tracker gives you the ability to see recent footsteps of enemies. This is good for when you're chasing an enemy through the twists and turns of the map, or could alert you to somebody lurking nearby. Here's my ranking for the third perk slot in order of how useful they are. I recommend creating your class with overkill and grabbing it in a purchase loadout. Then pick up a class that has ghost on it in the loadout that drops after the first circle, and just re-pick up your weapons from the first class. Another loadout tip I have is to make an emergency class with your preferred primary that has the fully loaded perk on it, as well as ghost, double time, and tracker for those later game situations where you can land on a loadout drop and immediately be able to keep up with players that have full loadouts. Now let's look into equipment. I'm going to be going over the lethals and tacticals, but a lot of these are self-explanatory, so I'm just going to speedrun it. Thermites and molotovs are good for covering openings and drawing people out of cover. And they're good for finishing off down enemies without wasting ammo. Frags and stem tax grenades are nice for putting on damage at medium ranges and can clear out a room like your creepy uncle. C4s can do it all, and if you have two of them, you can double tap your lethal button to blow up one at a time. Prox mines and claymores are good for covering entryways, or to just throw them down somewhere like a little gremlin and see if it gets anyone. Throwing knives are best used if you're a god, or to quickly end a downed opponent. Flashes and stuns are best used to disorientate your enemies during pushes or to get your ass away from a squad. Smokes are good to cover your movements or to throw down while you're getting a loadout drop or using the shop. Heartbeat sensors are goaded, they'll let you know where the non-ghost players are at. Use it. Stims restore your health. Decoys are quick distractions, but they're not that effective. Gas grenades can win you fights in buildings or push people out of cover. Also, here are my current Warzone classes if you want to try them out for yourself. Go ahead and pause the video if you need more time. But that's all the tips I have for making the best guns and loadouts in Warzone. If this video helped you or you learned something new, drop a like on it. If not, dislike. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell if you don't want to miss an upload. And for those of you that watch all the way to the end of the video, drop a squad wipe in the comments below. Peace. What? I didn't fucking see that guy.